Hashem? You heard about Hashem? Once a friend told me that uh, that his son had some issues in school, and he went to the principal, to the manager, and started talking to him. So. talking about the problems of the kid, what to do. So the father asked him, listen, in the house, we're doing this, we're doing that, and Bezat Hashem, Hashem Ya'azor. So the principal looked at him and told him, here we're not talking about Hashem. Here we came to talk about Torah. <laughs> so I'm asking, Hashem, you heard about him? I have a student. He's, uh, he's around 70 years old and um, we first met like maybe five, six years ago and after a few weeks of learning in my class he told me, I want you to know that I was religious all of my life and I was keeping Torah mitzvot just without Hashem. He was religious. He was a fake from birth all of his life and only after he started hearing those words of faith something cracked inside of his heart and he woke up back to life. Hashem is asking us, what am I asking you for except of to have fear from heaven, the ir'ah, uti. The word ir'ah is a very, very deep word. It's a word that describes the whole path of serving the Creator. The ir'ah. To serve Hashem, the ir'ah, bapachad, bidchilu, chimu. What are we talking about? We have love and we have that word that's called ir'ah. What is Yir'ah? Love, okay, Ahava. We love Hashem, we're excited, we want to love Hashem, we want to want to want to love Hashem. Sometimes we want to want to want to want to want to love Hashem. It's not easy to love. But Yir'ah, people usually think that Yir'ah Shamai means Lot Asu. Not to move away from what Hashem commanded. Okay, let's like try to do the best we can, to be strong. And I want to talk a little bit about the word Yir'ah. Yir'ah is a word that is written like the word Yir'eh, to see. To see Hashem and to have fear from Hashem, fear from heaven, is written the same, Yir'ah and Yir'eh. And also we know that in two places both of those words are written together. In mitzvat areya, that every person, healthy person, needs to bring a sacrifice to Hashem Barach in the holy days, in the days of the holy temple in Bet Hamikdash, and over there, the obligation to bring the sacrifice to show yourself in front of Hashem is only to a person that can be seen means that when you're going to come to see Hashem, Hashem will look at you. And it's written over there, Yir'eh, Yir'eh. And in another place it's written, on Abraham Avinu, also it's written, Yir'eh, and it's written, Yir'eh. Abraham Avinu, he's the head of the believers. And he's opening our eyes to understand how really we need to see that path of serving Hashem in Barach, even based on fear. To fear from Hashem, to have a lot of honor, a lot of respect to Hashem, to have that strong, strong will of not moving from His commandments, of not violating none of His rules, to be strong, to be strict, is a very healthy, and strong and powerful level, high level, while serving Hashem. The only question is if we're doing it with a happy heart and a wishing soul, or 
that by doing it we're going to find ourselves falling from the will to serve Him. Because if a person now will try to do something that in the end will bring him down, will reject him, will push him out from his will to keep on committing himself to Hashem, serving Hashem, so he's losing more than he gains. It's written that by being too strict, a person can find himself falling to sadness. A person said in the beginning of his life, when he was young, when he was powerful, when the path was open for him, a certain way of serving Hashem Midbarach, waking up very early in the morning, running to a minyan, to shul, davening in a minyan always, birchot shachar in a minyan, doing so much, as much as he can, and more, and learning in the morning, and in the noon, and evening seder, and in the house, and tikkun chatzot at night, and zinkiyat shma, with the, with the mepil, in the, before he goes to sleep, and never speaks after the mepil. Wonderful, amazing. But now, one child came, thank God, to the house, second child, third child, the wife, she's going through things, Okay, sometimes it's very hard not to say a word after saying Birkat HaMepil. So what you're going to do? It becomes complex. And to learn the same 16 hours every day becomes even harder. And then you take it to 8 and it's also hard. And financially it can be very complex and you need to have some adjusting, adjust, adjustments into, into your life. You have to... So a person start chasing himself, and blaming himself, and feeling bad with himself. Why my friend, my chavruta, keep on learning 16 hours, and me, I don't have the ability to do the same. And everything that he does, he does it with sadness, with black bitterness, with frustration. I'm not worthy, I'm not good, it's not the right way, I'm not like I used to be, I'm not like I should be. And all of those foreign and negative thoughts, are breaking his happiness and he feels rejected. But the truth is that Hashem never told him and Hashem never told us, Hashem never told you to be strict and too hard with yourself. Like that you educate your child, you need to check his skills, his abilities, his power, his energy, and you should educate him corresponding to his power also on yourself. You must check your pulse, your ability, your power. A person must learn in a place that his heart desires, that he's happy to learn. It can be that yeshiva, it can be that synagogue, it can be that place, and it can be that book. Maybe he's not so happy to learn from that book, so he needs to find things that will make him happy. And especially when it's written, Hashem Yesharim Mesamchelev that when you're serving Hashem straight, like you should, so then it's supposed to bring happiness to your heart. So if you find yourself sad and depressed and dark, so something is wrong with the way you serve. And also Hashem is saying, You were serving me, but not with joy, not with a smile on your face, so it was all wrong. So a person must have that understanding that Hashem doesn't want you to be broken, to be sad, to be depressed, to be bitter. He wants you to be happy. And who will decide how you're going to be happy? It's in your hands. It is in our hands. You cannot blame it on someone else. You cannot blame your wife for not learning. You cannot blame your chavuta that he makes more money than you. You cannot blame your parents for being poor. You cannot. You must understand that there is an individual, precise supervision on your life that are being run by Hashem. The one that we are not supposed to talk about this evening? No, we should. Let's talk about Hashem tonight. Tonight we'll talk about Hashem. Hashem, He is the one that chooses for you everything that happens to you in life. Like that it's written, Atariban al Kola Masim, you're in charge of all of the actions, on all of the actions, which actions? To say on Hashem Barak that he controls his own actions, 
that's a disgrace, that's a shame. You're not going to say to Hashem, oh, I see, you know what you're doing. No, Hasve Shalom. Of course, we know that Hashem Yidbarach, He knows it all. So on which actions we're talking? On our actions. Atar ibon al kol ha-maasim of mine. You're in charge on everything that I do, even when I fail, I should know that it's from you. When I succeed, I know it's from you. When I fail, Hashem Barach is saying to Yaakov Avinu, I will send you down to Egypt. And then I will bring you back up to the Holy Land. So also our downs are part of Hashem's plan. Hashem Barach, He exiled us. Hashem Barach, He decreed on us. Oili He made that oath. And He sent us. Tana Di Beliau is saying that if those words wouldn't be written, no one would be allowed to say them. That the Creator Himself, He is described as a man that divorced his wife and his children, took them out from the house to a crossroad, to the intersection, and in that place He sent them away. And every year He's coming to that place and He's crying and expressing his regret from his action. The Creator Himself. And the Tana de Biliao is explaining that the Creator seems to us like a chicken that is looking for her chicks. Looking. Tana de Biliao. Eliyahu Anavi, not the breast of Meshuga. Eliyahu Anavi, the Prophet. Told Rab Anan that the Creator feels lost, confused. Where are my babies? Where are my children? And it's in our power because we've been commanded to bring back the power to heaven. We need to give power to Hashem. We need to give the strength to Hashem. We need to tell Hashem, you're the one that have the power to heal us, please heal us. You're the one that open your arms, your hands and gives the Parnassah the money, please give us the money. We need to praise Him and to remind Him, you're the one that redeemed us, please redeem us again. You're the one that protected us in the desert, please protect us again. I read once from one of the righteous people that they said, that they went through a very hard time in their own lives. And they felt so bad, so broken, so depressed. They didn't know what to do, which advice to find for themselves, how to come back to life. And that righteous man is saying that while he was in that darkness, suddenly he had that thought that everything that happens to him in life is only what the Creator is reflecting to him that happens actually in kingship of heaven. That Malchuta Dirkia is similar to Malchuta Dara, that the kingship is in heaven is equal, is showing to us. I'm sorry, the kingship of earth where that we are living our life is showing and representing for us, like a mirror, the kingship of heaven. So if we have weaknesses here, it means that there are weaknesses over there, somehow, in a way that we cannot understand. If we feel sad, if we feel broken, if we lost our hope, also in heaven something very similar is happening in the same place. And what's our job? What's our responsibility? To wake up, itaruta diltata, to wake up from the bottom, from hell, from the darkness. To call Hashem from the depths. To call Him. And why is it written, from the depths, plural? That a person can find himself full one time. And to call Hashem. And not to find himself answered at all. Can find all of his prayers going straight to heaven. And no redemptions, no salvations, no miracles. And then he will fall again. And from that second falling, from that second failure, or third, or three thousand, it doesn't matter. We're not allowed to give up from calling Hashem Barach. And to remind Him, I'm your lost child. I'm your lost daughter. I'm your lost son. 
I'm the one that you should reveal your loving kindness on. Please help me. Please redeem me. Please save me. And with which way? With mercy. And the meaning of the word mercy is to show love and support to someone that is not worthy. So you're not supposed to be worthy that God will have mercy on you. He just needs to have mercy on you because you are one of His creations. So out of that understanding, we need to reset our minds about being strict and trying to be righteous all of the time. Because between the word tzaddik, righteous, to the word tzaduki, there is a huge difference. Who are the tzadukim? Tzadukim were the people that called themselves righteous. Tzaduki is always right. He is justifying himself 24-7. Telling why he's right, why everyone else are wrong. 24 hours a day he's busy on showing the world how righteous he is. That is Tzaduki. He doesn't have Hashem in his life. He's religious. He's got a black yarmulka on his bald head. He's got peot, side curls. He's got a beard. He's got a fancy, dark, clean suit, white shirt, black pants, and he's justifying himself 24 hours a day on how righteous he is, on how good he is, on how he's just trying to do the best that he can, how hard is his life. No one supports him. No one helps him. He's that poor guy that you can see in front of your eyes when you look at the mirror. That's tzaduki. Now, when you want to change that, so you just need to bring Hashem Barach into the picture. When you write the word tzaduki, so the letter Yud is in the end, because for a tzaduki, Hashem is in the end, because He is the center. He is so poor, and He's so tired, and He's so, so weak, and He's got so many things on His mind, and He's always right, and everyone are so wrong, and Hashem, oh, Hashem is so far. The letter Yud is in the end. That's Tzaduki. But for a Tzaddik, the Yud is in the center. The letter Yud, the letter that represents Hashem, is in the center of his life. So he becomes righteous. And he is making Hashem it Barach to be right always. And he's justifying his wife. And he's justifying everyone else. And he's trying to find the path of working on himself and taking responsibility on his own life and to try to recognize the message, the wisdom of the Creator that is hidden inside that unique, precise, individual supervision on himself. Why I don't have money? Not, oh, I don't have money. Why I cannot learn 16 hours? Not, oh, I cannot learn 16 hours. Don't be sad. Maybe now, when you cannot learn 16 hours, you meant to do something else? Are you so sure that Moshe Rabbeinu was learning 16 hours in those days that he was going and arguing with, with Pharaoh and talking to his people, to Am Israel in Egypt? Sometimes you don't have time. You think that Rabbi Yosef Karo all of his life was learning 20 hours every day? No. No. Also, Rabbi Yosef Karo, he had his obligations, he had his house, he had his family, he had to take care of Parnassa. All of the righteous people went through that path. The only difference between a regular person to a righteous man is that the righteous man is not distracting his thoughts, even for a second, from the will of Hashem. The will of Hashem is written in the books, but many, many times you need to read between the lines to understand which line is the right one. You have so many rules, so many alachot, and you have also so many things that contradict each other. And sometimes you need to choose a path. You want to learn Torah, and you need to have Shalom Bait. Both of those obligations are midoraita, are written in the Bible. Hashem commanded us. It's the most important thing. So now you need to choose. How are you going to choose? 
You want to do certain things, you must bring Panasa to the house, you want to count on Hashem. Sometimes it's a time to do Hishtadlut and to put some effort on working in a way, and sometimes you need to throw it all on Hashem. How are you going to choose the right way? How are you going to know? Sometimes you want to learn Gemara because you feel that it will make you happy. Sometimes it's too hard and you just feel like saying Tehillim. How are you going to know? Both of them is the Oraita. Sometimes you want to learn Halakha. Sometimes you feel like, please, I cannot open the Tur Shulchan Aruch. I'm not able. What are you going to do? And also you have the obligation to learn Shnai Mikab Echad It takes time. Sometimes you don't know what to do. You have your children to educate. You have certain things that are in the same level of importance and you don't know how to choose. How are you going to choose? I'll give you my phone number in the end of the lecture. Bezat Hashem, you all were more than welcome to call me. I'll help you. It's not a problem. It's not so hard. You need to listen to your heart. Because the verse is saying, Lecha amar libi bakshu panai tamid. Your heart is telling you. And your heart is my messenger. That's what Rashi is adding. Lecha amar libi bishlichuti. The heart is the messenger of Hashem to tell you. Bakshu panai tamid. You should ask for my face always. You have two ways. And you need to ask yourself, where is Hashem? Where is the face of Hashem? What does it mean, Bakshu Panai, ask for my face? When we're saying the face of heaven, the face of Hashem, we're talking about the smile of Hashem. We're talking about the pleasant of Hashem. We're talking about the satisfaction and the joy of being close to God. That's what you need to look for when you have two things. And you need to choose the one that will bring you to life. And then you will be able to keep the Torah that it will become for you Torah Chaim, Torah of life. Because if the person purified himself, so the Torah becomes a potion that will bring him to life. But if the person have not purified himself enough, lo zacha, it becomes to be a lethal poison. Naset lo sam mavet a dangerous drug that can kill a person. Because there are moments that you need to understand that if you want to do something for Hashem, you have to violate some rules. And like that I mentioned that situation many times in my lectures. Moshe Rabbeinu took that decision to break the holy tablets. No one is able to take that decision. There is no chief rabbi that is able to hold the first Bible handmade by Hashem, been written by the finger of God, and to throw that down to the ground. No one can take that decision except of Moshe. But Moshe was never commanded to do that. Moshe was commanded to hand it to our nation, to teach the Torah, to protect the Torah, to honor the Torah, to respect the Torah. Only after the fact, after he broke the holy tablets, then Hashem is telling him, I'm praising you for the fact that you broke them. But before of that, he didn't know. No one knows. No one can guide you on those situations. When five minutes before Shabbat, your wife, she's got a question about how to put that pot into the oven or not, you're allowed to, not allowed to, with the separation, without, if you're allowed to stir it, and allowed to close it, to cover it, not to cover, you're allowed to touch the air condition now, all the family are freezing, you don't have a rabbi that you can ask, you don't have that knowledge, no one can help you. You must take a decision in that moment. How are you going to choose? Now you're going to blame her that you didn't have enough time to go and learn those halachot? You destroy the Shabbat. You destroy the house. Why are we keeping Shabbat? Why are you keeping Torah and Mitzvot? Because Hashem commanded us that by keeping Torah and Mitzvot, the Shekhinah will be with us. But only if a person got peace in his house, everyone are happy in his house, so then the Shekhinah will be with him. <coughs> because Lo Matzah Kadosh Baruch Hu Kli Machzik Shalom, there is no vessel to contain the blessing without peace. So now, by the name of God, because you want to fulfill your obligation to the Torah, and you're upset on her that she didn't let you go and learn Torah, you're going to fight with her, and you're going to make her miserable all of the Shabbat. So why are you keeping Shabbat? 
שבת שלום. שבת מנס פור פיס, פור לאב, פור פרנצ'יפ, ספן טיים וויד הפמילי. נוט אונלי שלו שודס אין דה בית מדרש. Where are the children in the time that you're in the Beit Midrash? What's going on with your family when you're learning Torah? It's true, you must learn Torah, but you're not allowed to leave your family. So it's too hard for you? I see. I know. It's too hard for me as well. There is only one solution. Call Hashem. Call Hashem. You can call Hashem also in Shabbat. And it's a free call. You just need to open your mouth and express your heart and tell him, listen, I don't know what to do in this case. I don't have a clue how to deal with the difficulties in my life, Hashem. I'm trying to commit myself to you. I'm trying to keep Shabbat here. I'm not playing around. I'm trying to learn your rules. That will be an honest prayer. Tell him, I'm trying to make my wife happy and I don't understand her. I don't understand what she wants from me. I don't understand why am I trying to do so many great things that I realize that that's your will. And everything goes wrong. Everything that I'm trying to do is going in the opposite direction, Ribbono Shel Olam. You said, if I'm going to give my maizer, I'll be rich. And I'm giving, and you know I'm giving. And I don't see the money, Hashem. And you said that if I'm going to learn Torah, I'll have many blessings. And you know that I'm learning Hashem, and I don't see the blessings. That's honesty. That's not bad words against Hashem. That's your truth. You think that Hashem wants to hear something else? Oh, no, Hashem, everything is perfect. Bisfatav ki beduni velibor ichak mimeni. Respect Hashem with your mouth, with your lips, when your heart is still far away. That's the will of Hashem? No. <coughs> Hashem is close to everyone that will call Him with truth. That's a verse. And if your truth now is to say to Hashem in Barach, I'm lost. I lost my path. I don't know what to do. I need an advice here. I need a salvation here. I think that that is the will of Hashem, to hear those words coming out of your mouth. And I think that if we will open the book of Tehillim and we're going to read the prayers of King David, we're going to see that in many places King David, that he is Mashiach Tzidkenu, that he is the holy eternal king of our nation, that he is the chosen one that Hashem chose to put him to his right. And he's crying to Hashem. And he's sharing with his feelings of being so lost and confused. And afraid and terrified. And he's just being honest enough to share and to tell what he feels to Hashem. And not to hide his emotions and not to pretend to be someone that he's not. He's just being very honest with Hashem. And when he's weak, he's asking for power. And when he's poor, he's asking for money. And he's not faking. And he's not pretending. He's just being honest with his life. And he's bringing Hashem Itbarach into his life. Because Tov Hashem Lakol. Hashem is good for everything. Hashem is good for health. Hashem is good for wealth. Hashem is good for Shlom Bayit. Hashem is good for educated children. Hashem is good for learning Torah. To pray with the right intention. To wake up in the right time. To get to Shul. And to catch mikveh before, Hashem is good for everything. But Hashem is close to the one that will call him with truth. If now I will say to Hashem, Barach, Hashem, I want to be holy. Hashem, I want to be pure. Hashem, I want to serve you 24 hours a day. And then someone will bring that amazing kugel to the living room. And my nose will take me straight to that pot. So what should I do? with the prayers that I just asked for Hashem. Hashem, I don't want to have no more desires, no more lusts. Please, Hashem, I want to be clean. What's that? Someone is making a barbecue. So, okay, you said you want to be pure. No, 
You said you want to be holy, right? No, you said you want to be separated from all pleasures of this world. Where are you now? What happened? What distract your thoughts? A few grains, a little bit of salt, a little bit of water, black pepper. What? A slice of a kosher cow? What? Fire, coals, salt? What? What distract your thoughts? In what a very tasty, delicious steak is different from the verse that is rebuking our people that were reminding themselves sitting in Egypt, Al Sira Basar, yearning for meat, hoping for garlic and potatoes. Isn't it all that Chulent is all about? It's not the same thing. It is. So now you have that desire for food. So why to lie to yourself about it and to pretend to be someone else? Let's deal with our reality. Let's be people of truth and be honest with Hashem. <coughs> Let's ask Hashem why Hashem in Barach. I found myself in this place that in the back of my head I truly do want to learn Torah. I know I have that desire. Somewhere inside, I have that holy will that wants to commit himself to you, Hashem. But whenever I smell some food, whenever I hear the bags being opened in the Beit Midrash, so something happens inside of me, and I'm losing my focus. I'm basically losing my mind. Why? Not only for a barbecue, I'm going to close the Gemara. Also for a silly watermelon, I'm going to close the Gemara. Why every chit-chat will block my mind from that holy desire to commit myself to the truth? Why every Lashon Ara is so, so arousing? Why every two people that are talking, opening my eyes to think what they're all talking about? Why am I finding myself in this place, Hashem? I think that's what that means that I experience in my life, I think that the honesty of dealing with my weaknesses, with my defaults, will bring me closer to Hashem and not going to reject me from Him. You might feel ashamed to express your weaknesses, your dark spots in front of someone, but if you know that that one is your best friend, so you're not supposed to be shy. You're not supposed to be embarrassed. On the verse, Ki tir'eh, if you will see, Shor achicha, the animal, the bull of your brother, lost. You should bring that animal back to your brother. The Orachayim HaKadosh is explaining that that lost animal is one of your nation is one of your people. And that brother in the verse is Hashem. So you and Hashem are brothers. Brothers means equal, in a way. In a way that the Torah chose to present to us. To understand our importance in the eyes of Hashem. That He holds us and counts us as brothers. That when he looks at you, he sees in front of him someone that is equal to him. How can it be? Simple answer. The Creator, he created us in his shape, Betzalmo. <coughs> but we know that Hashem is beyond the shape. He's above this world. So which is, which is that shape? It's not the body. Because Hashem does not have a body. It's that godly soul that we have, that it's part of heaven from above. That's our soul. That's your soul. That's my soul. Every one of us need to say, that's my soul. I have a soul that it is part of heaven. And even if a person sinned all of his life, 
And on his deathbed, he will decide to come back to Hashem. And he will open the Sidhu for the first time in his life. And he will read, Elokai, Neshama Shenatata Bi Tehorahi. The soul that you gave me, planted inside of me, is pure. He will not lie. Even if he sinned all of his life, so his body is impure. His body being contaminated by the sins, by the crimes. But the soul will always stay holy because it's a godly soul. In Judgment Day, when Hashem is sending the devil to hell, the devil is so rude and he's saying to Hashem, You send me. Why are you sending me now to hell? I was only your messenger. So Hashem is telling him, So what do you want us to do? The devil is saying, So rude. I think you and I should go together to hell. What Hashem is answering the devil? Let's go. And he is walking down to hell with the devil. And the flames of hell are catching the devil. And they cannot catch Hashem. Why? Because Hashem is above this world. And your soul is godly as well. Your soul is chelek, eloka mimal, is part of heaven. And it's trapped in a physical body. That's your vehicle, that's not you. When you look at your face in the mirror, you cannot see yourself. You can see what the Hashem put you in. You can see the way that Hashem Barach presents you to the world, but you cannot see yourself. Your true self lives inside of your body. When the first man, the Midrash is saying, came to the Creator, embarrassed himself in front of him, confessed, admitted his sin, the Creator told him, you need to go now out of heaven. You need to go out to the external world, out from the door of heaven. Adam Arishon was terrified. He asked him, what do you want me to do? My body made out of light. All of the outsiders, the demons, the husks, they will eat me alive. I won't be able to stand in that dark world. Hashem told him, I'm sorry. You can go and ask one of the animals in heaven to give you a body, to give you a vehicle. Take one of their bodies and go with that body out for my garden. Adam went, start asking the animals, hey, I'm sorry, Mr. Lion, can you give me your body? The lion shown him his back and ran away. I'm sorry, I need my body. He asked the zebra, the zebra said the same. He asked the camel, the camel said the same. He asked all the birds, everyone told him, we're sorry, we need our own bodies. You see, you need to find a solution. <coughs> Adam Arishon came back to Hashem and told him, I don't have a body. How do you want me to go out? My body is made out of light. I'm afraid. Hashem told him, go to the snake. The snake, he pushed you to sin. He will give you his body. Adam Arishon went to the snake and told him, listen, you destroyed my life. I need your body now. The snake, he was so humble in that time. He said, you're right. I'm so sorry. Give me only 10 minutes. I'm going to say goodbye to my beautiful body and I'm going to hand it over to you. And he went and he planted all the most modern, sophisticated devices, sounds, speakers, surrounds that you can plant in a body and gave Adam Arishon his contaminated body. The Zohar Kadosh is saying that the impure body, even of Moshe Rabbeinu, is Mimishcha Dechivya, is from the contamination of the snake. That body is the snake itself that is wrapping our holy soul. And when you walk, and when you listen, and you hear, inside of your own mind, negative, foreign thoughts. Look at you. 
you're so horrible. You're not fulfilling your obligation. You're not doing anything right. You're so bad. You're so evil. You're hopeless. Hashem doesn't like you. Hashem hates you. Hashem will not going to listen to your prayers. Why do you think that Hashem will care about you? Look at your actions. You're a disgrace. That is the voice of the snake. That is not you. You are a poor holy soul that traps in a physical body. The body of the snake that is destroying your self-esteem and your respect to yourself and destroying and erasing your real true identity. That you are the son of God. That you are the wife of God. That you are the brother of God. And there is another verse that is comparing us even to the mother of the Creator. Because we're bringing life to this world and inside those babies there is a godly soul. And we're bringing down God to this world in our children. We're delivering the Creator down to this world so He's comparing us to His mother, so to speak. How important we are in His eyes. When He's looking at us, and saying to us, Libavtini be'achat me'enayich, be'achat anak mitzoveronayich. When I was looking at you in our wedding day, and I saw you in one eye already looking on another man, the golden calf planning how to cheat on me. But with one eye, you still looked at me. Hashem is saying to us, how much I appreciate, it touched my heart that you looked at me with one eye under the chuppah. Say, what, Hashem? Have you ever seen such a humble groom? In the day of his wedding under the chuppah, his wife is looking on another man, planning how she will sin with him and... Then she went and sinned. And he still cherished that moment that she was looking at him with one eye. How can it be? How can it be? The Zohar Kadosh is answering that question by telling us that the Creator is looking at us only with Chad Eina Derachame, with one merciful eye. And that's it. And except of that, he doesn't see anything. He doesn't look at your sins. Who is looking at your sins? The devil. The snake. That one that is judging you from inside. That one that is criticizing you. That is slaughtering you. That is breaking you to pieces. The snake. The damn snake. Anachash Aru. The cursed snake. He is the one that is cursing you. But you know what? I'll tell you a secret. He is not damaging your life. He doesn't have the permission to touch you. He is not destroying your life. He cannot move a finger in this world. The only place that he can grab in this world is inside of your mind to let you hear his foreign words, his negative voice. And the free choice will always stay in your hand to tilt it to the direction that you will choose. It's a hard test. It's a big time hard test to choose life. And why is it written, Here, I'm offering to you life and I'm offering to you death and you should choose life. What? What's the problem to choose life? You have a gun and you have food. You have a, 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 a poison and you have a suitcase with one million dollars. What are you going to choose? It's obvious. You don't need to command me on something that is so obvious. Unless it's not as obvious. It's not that obvious. Because there are things that look like life and they're actually death. They will lead the person to death. And there are things that look like death. And they will lead the person to life. And you know, in the yeshivot, when people are learning, when rabbis are talking, they will always going to push you to think and to understand that 
Even if it's so hard in the summer to wear that black jacket, you still need to. Even that it's so hard in the summer to have that long beard and the side curl, you have to. And they will always push you to keep the Torah. And I see that attitude. I agree with it many, many times. But sometimes, also to learn Torah, Torah, and to be from, and to be Haredi, and to learn Torah, also looks like heaven. But actually it's hell. Actually it destroys your wife. It destroys your children. That you're too strict. That you're being too hard. That you're not sensitive enough to their needs, their real needs. Not to how lazy they are and spoiled they are. To the fact that the child needs to have a father and not a Talmud Chacham as a father. That the wife, she needs a friend, she needs a husband and not a Talmud Chacham as a husband. She needs someone to listen to her. He needs someone to chat with him, to talk to him. Someone that he will feel that loves him, that cares about him. Not only that his father is so educated and learned, He's a big scholar. He's from the first five in the yeshiva of his rabbi. That's not always enough for a seven years old child and for a 35 years old wife with four children or seven that needs a hand, that needs support, that needs love. Sometimes to push yourself to the back midrash it's not the only thing that you should do. You should check yourself and ask, why am I learning so much? Am I really desiring the Torah? Am I really following the commandments and that's my intention? That's the reason? That's my purpose? That's my goal? Maybe the air condition over there and the fact that I'm far away from home and I don't need to shower my children and I don't need to make supper and I don't need to prepare the house for Shabbos. Maybe to run away to the Beit Midrash and to the Mikveh in Friday and to be must finish the Shnai Mikra Vechat Targum is a very easy solution sometimes. To run away from commitments of life, from what that Hashem wants you to do. There was a very big righteous man that in one of the days he heard a knocking on the door. He went and opened the door. He saw one of his best students standing in front of him. Yes, how can I help you? The student answered, I have a problem with my wife. She doesn't understand that I need to learn also in Friday. She wants me to clean the house with her, to mop the floor, to throw the garbage. She doesn't understand the importance of Limut Torah. I can't understand her. The rabbi told him, listen, I need to think about it. It's a serious problem. I'll give you an answer in a few days. Friday morning, that Avrech hears knocking on his door. He opened the door. He sees the rabbi standing. Yes, the rabbi arrived. Something happened. Can I help you? Do you need something? The rabbi said, no. You told me that your wife, she needs help with cleaning and preparing the house for Shabbos. And you want to learn Torah. So I said, I'll come and help you if it's okay by you. It's not a joke. We are a joke. We are the clowns that don't understand. That we don't understand completely the will of Hashem even though that we can find many evidence to justify ourselves in the Torah. But the will of Hashem Barach is something that you need to seek for. You need to want to serve Hashem. You need to want to commit yourself to the real voice of Hashem. Because the snake is very sophisticated. And he can dress himself also in Torah and mitzvot. And to pretend it to you, to show to you, like you must do something. And that thing will be a complete lie. That thing will be the worst thing that you should do in your life. Because Hashem wants you also 
to respect everyone and to love everyone and not to hate no one in your heart. And not only other people are Jewish people that you need to go and save their lives. Also your wife, she's Jewish. Also your children are Jewish children that need support and a father. Not only orphan <coughs> needs a father. Also your children that you're going to live long life, they need a father. They need a happy mother. And your wife will be happy only if she will have you. You, your real you as a husband, as a caring, loving, supporting, sensitive father that cares, husband that cares, that loves, a real friend, an honest, righteous person, not a person that justifies himself all day long. What she wants from me, I'm learning Torah. What does it want from me? I still haven't finished the Shas, or I finished it only once. The Creator, He is sending us to many missions in life. We have many tasks in life, not only to learn Torah and to pray in a minion, also to be human beings, also to say Shalom Aleichem to every person that you see in the street. As an Israeli person from the Holy Land of Israel, I'm telling you, that I spent many, many months of my life in the United States of America. People here, and I'm talking about Jewish, they have a problem of saying Shalom Aleichem in the streets. Guys, you need to wake up and to start saying Shalom Aleichem when you see another person walks in front of you in the streets. And I'm not saying that everyone are wrong in that. I saw a few people that said Shalom Aleichem to me when we went in the streets. But not everyone. Rabbi Yochanan would tell Shalom Aleichem to every person, even to a foreign, even to a non-Jew, even in the market. There was no one person that said to him Shalom Aleichem before of him. He was so fast in greeting everyone, saying Shalom to everyone. Always to say Shalom. Always to speak with peace. To talk with pleasant, with a smile. To have patience to your children, to your wife, to your friends, to your siblings. That's the main mission. To love your friends. Mitzvot between friends, between people are much more important from the mitzvot between a person to the Creator Himself. Hashem wants us to be human. Hashem wants us to be nice. And it is in our power to do that. For that we need to be honest with ourselves. That honesty will grow only when a person will have a conversation with himself. Will be mimare de chushbana. He will calculate his moves. He will ask himself, like the Chafetz Chaim was doing, like many Hasidim were doing, like many righteous people were doing, keeping mitzvah tefillah and mitzvah tshuvah midoraita, talking to the Creator, like our ancestors were talking without the Seder, before the Seder been written, talking and asking and begging and praising the Creator, asking for all their needs, begging for salvation if needed, thanking Hashem, seeing Hashem, recognizing Hashem, thinking about Hashem, talking with yourself, talking to your soul, talking to heaven, talking to the Creator, it's a mitzvah midoraita, mitzvah tatfilah. We can all open the Rambam and to see the explanation how to pray to Hashem. Mitzvah tatfilah, mitzvah tatshuva, it's to confess. We must confess on every mistake, not to kill ourselves, just to share, just to tell Hashem, Hashem, I'm sorry. Today I upset my wife. Today I ignored my child. Today I was not thinking right. Not only today I was not praying in the right hour. Also today I hurt my wife's feelings. Also today I ashamed a Jew. 
כל המלבין פני חברו בערבים אין לו חלק לעולם הבא. A person that ashamed another person in public, he doesn't have a share in the world to come. How you go out of that? How you go out of that? When you can mock a person, when you can laugh at a person, you can disgrace a person, how you go out of that? How you can do that and one minute after to think that you're so important learning Chumash and, and Gemara with Rashi Tosfot, Ritva, Ran, Rif, with Tfilin Rabbeinu Tam. How do you think that it, it looks in the eyes of Hashem? When the Gemara is telling us on that Tana that his wife, she dropped one tear in Yom Kippur, in the eve of Yom Kippur. Because her husband didn't <coughs> came early enough from yeshiva, and he died. Why learning Torah? But the Torah is not protecting. How can it be the Torah didn't protect that husband? Because your word is something that you should keep. And when you gave your word to your wife that you're going to honor her and going to respect her and going to make her happy and going to take care of all of her needs, and be her best friend for life, and going to love her. That word meant something to her and to Hashem. And we are obligated to keep that word. And we, after 120 years, will be so rewarded if our wives will testify on us that we were their best friends, that we cared about them, that we listened to them, that we had the time for them. Because that's a real righteous man, that he's making other people righteous, that he's making other people happy, that he's supporting others, that he cares, that he's sensitive, that he loves, and that he knows how to show his love and his respect. That's a real Govrin Yudain, Jewish man, that knows how to respect their wives. Like we're reading too fast in the Ketubah. Too fast. And to the Sfaradim, it's much harder after making an oath, shaking a hand to the rabbi on that. That's a big deal. Over there. There is a way to fix, to listen to the voice of your soul, to follow the voice of Hashem, to listen to the will of Hashem. Pikudei Hashem Yesharim Esamchei Lev, the real straight path of Hashem to keep Hashem's obligations in the right way is with joy is not to be too strict on yourself. It is only to check your real abilities and the abilities of your family. How much power, strength, money, time you have. And to do as much as you can. As much as you find that you have power to do, do, but not more than that. Because when you're taking, you're not taking only from your own time. You're taking from your wife, from your children. You want to ask permission? If you will feel that when she approved and said yes, it was really from her heart, and she's not staying home sad and bitter, so go. If your wife's flame and fire and light is shining so much that you can go and do amazing work outside and to come back and to see that the flame is still on, go and do. But if not, don't blame her because it's the obligation on you to make her happy. It's not a mitzvah for women to be happy. It's a mitzvah for the man to make his wife happy and pleased. So if she's sad, it means that you're not keeping your job, not she. She needs your love. She needs your support. And you were not supposed to come and listen to this crazy class. 
<laughs> because what you're going to do now, so I told you, in the end of the class, I'll give you my phone number, and it's not a problem, I'm going to walk with you, I'm going to help you, I'm going to give you more advice, it's not a problem, I'm not leaving you alone, I'm going to stay good friends. Everything is good. We have the ability to listen to the voice of Hashem, to the real voice of Hashem. We have that ability. Just we need to listen and to use the tools that God gave us. Divrei emet nikarim, words of truth can be recognized. Listen to the voice of truth inside of you. When you have two things and you must choose, try to listen to the voice of truth. What is the real will of Hashem for me? What is the truth? What is the real truth? Should I go and learn Torah? Okay, why? What are my motives? My reason to learn Torah is because I am trying to keep God's will or because I'm running away from showering my children. Is my will now to go and work is because that I understand that that's the will of Hashem or because that I'm afraid or because that I'm terrified? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? Those are the questions with a positive attitude that you should have that will lead you to the path of truth, to serve Hashem with joy, with a happy heart, with a smile on your face. Only a daily conversation, keeping mitzvah at filah midoraita, on daily basis with the Creator, will bring you to the right answer, to find the right path, the golden path, the one that will lead us all to life. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.